Welcome to Hope for All Ministry.
he's been waiting. Subject matter of which most will be spoken on its word conversion. And the objective is to explain the process of conversion and the results of being in Christ. Yes. We have just read our main text. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, which I know all of us should know. Therefore, therefore, if any man, and this any man is every man, be in Christ, he is a new creature. And what? All things are passed away. The old, all things become new. That's what Christ wants from us as a people today. Let us pray. My Father, who art in heaven, Lord, I'm but a humble servant. I pray even now that thou will use me in a mighty way. Cause your face to shine down upon me, Lord. Let self be diminished. And let you be seen high and lifted up. We pray in Jesus' name. How to become a Christian and remain one. You see, friends, to become a Christian, it's not like a walk in the park. It is not one that you put on whenever you like and take it off whenever you want it. To become a Christian is just like marriage. There is no expiration date on the marriage certificate. Nor even when it comes to being in Christ. If you are for him, let it be for the rest of your life. And if not, don't go calling him. 
But let me say this morning that all of us who are here were destined to that kingdom wants to be the light in receiving the glory of God. Amen. The word conversion to convert is to change from one character type or purpose to another. For instance, our bodies convert food to energy. Amen. We can convert inches to centimeters, pounds to kilograms, and dollars to euros. Our heart can undergo similar conversion. We can change direction morally, psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually. The scripture which is found in Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, For as we think it, in his heart, so is he. And indeed, of a fact, we are what we think. So if you think impure things, that's what you think. If you think righteousness, that's what you think. And I say this today, brothers and sisters, let us only think righteousness. Amen. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew translate conversion means to turn back or return. It is also translated Restore. As in Psalms 23, verse 3, He restoreth my soul. Which means He restores us anew. So the picture that the Bible points of the word conferred is to return to what we were initially created to be. Sin has taken an indelible mark on us. We have the nature of sin. We can do nothing of our own except sin all day long. But if you desire the Savior and Him to be with you, then you're going to have to speak as the scripture says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. In step with Jesus, titled the, new, the, the Need for Daily Conversion. Let me read. It says, Genuine conversion is needed. Not once in years, but daily. This conversion brings man into a new relation with God. Old things, his natural passion and hereditary and cultivated tendencies to wrong passed away and he is renewed and sanctified but this work must be continual for as long as Satan exists 
he will make an effort to carry on his work. He who strives to serve God will encounter a strong undercurrent of wrong. Brothers and sisters, this is truth. Sister Jennifer, your time is coming. The moment you decide to follow Jesus, then you will be under severe attack by the wicked one. And that attack will not be an easy one. Many times you will think of and in the towel. But how can you hand in the towel when God has given us so many promises and encouragement, reason for us to hold on? Amen. If you can't hold on, tell him to hold you. Because we're weak and feeble. Yes. There is nothing in us transparent. But without Christ, we are nothing. Yes. Nothing at all. Amen. For those who are in Christ, is our hers heart need to be barricaded by constant and watchful prayers or else the embankment will give, give way and like a mill stream the undercurrent of wrong will swept away the safeguard if you leave yourself open to the wiles of the devil he will slip in you have to keep yourself in constant connection and prayer with God all the days of your life. Suffocate the devil from enter. Mm. Yesterday I was telling the lady who I stay amongst. That we of ourselves when encounter anything that name hardship, our initial thought is to turn off. We must have spiritual endurance, brothers and sisters, to become a Christian and remain as one. We would have to succumb to the reality of what Christ went through. Went through. Amen. Amen. Being a Christian is a lifestyle. Amen. And I'm sure in a word you know when he says that if you come to him and then go back in the world, then you are like a dog to its vomit and a pig to its wallow. How degrading that could be. Christian faith, Christian walk is not an easy walk. But the scripture says with God, all things are possible. No renewed heart can be kept in a condition of Weakness without the daily application of the salt of the word. In fact, divine grace must be received daily. Amen. Or no man, no man at all will stay converted. You have to be like a door with the angels always connected to God. Yeah. Always reminiscing on him. You feed on him. You sleep on him. You dwell on him all the days of your life. Amen. And every 
one of us here today can testify that there are a lot of times sometimes you feel like you just want to give up. But why didn't you give up? Because you trust in Jesus. You see, the reality is that there are many people in this world today who wish if they could have a new lease on life. Some are painfully unsatisfied with their original looks of appearance, skin color, and hair. You see, friends, the thought of changing or if you prefer enhance your image is a clear statement to our maker that you are going against his divine design mm. yes, sir. we're talking here about conversion mm. and many people convert themselves in the wrong way wow. the very fact that you are so adamant to change and add your appearance, skin color, and your hair means that you don't care a bit what God has to say about your so-called beauty. And here's what they do. Silicone dress. Fake eyelashes. Silicone butt. Fake fingernails. Fake hair. Blue, purple, yellow, pink, red. And to a greater extent, skin bleaching. How in God's name you're going to bleach your skin? With what? We're talking about conversion here, brothers and sisters. Does that show Christ-likeness? But of course, we're talking to the outer world who don't have nothing of understanding of the desire that God has for them. But shockingly, there are those in the household of faith also do these things. How to become a Christian and remain as one it's not to hide to yourself, but to remain the way how God has made it. Tattoos. Those ugly looking marks make you look like dirt. Body piercing in every area you can think of so you are unrecognized and become living zombies. You see, LSC, I do believe that there are those who wish if they could live their lives all over again. Their wishful thoughts of preference. And lately, there's a lot that I've read about and listen on the news. I prefer to be a girl than a boy. Some prefer to be a boy than a girl. But what about this? I prefer to give my life to Jesus early, which is a righteous and conscious thing that everyone should be saying. Rather, they're looking on the outside wall. With all different colors. And when you put paint on top of paint, it becomes thick and easy and hard to remove. You see, everyone has one life to live. And that life is what you make of it. Whatever your preference may seem to be in thought, you can.
cannot be a girl if you were born a boy. And it is. And for whatever reason. You violate your body for all the wrong reason. Then that's on you. And you cannot be a boy. If you were born one. And desire you want to be a girl. Again, you are going against God's divine design. Yes, yes, and so you have these people now who go to the doctor and pay millions of money to convert themselves from man to woman and some from woman to man. Ridiculous. God wants to save people. God wants us to understand who he is and what he stands for and the reason why he made us. How we should live. How we should cope with each other. Whatever changes you try to make, that's a major damage. To yourself. But the good thing is that, and I'm so glad, brothers and sisters, that with all the evil in this world, there is always something good. Amen. The good thing is that even though we cannot live our lives over again, we can seek a divine change in our direction our old ways, our failed situation for a much better and brighter life and that is a life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let him be the landscaper that will groom you, fashion you, mold you and beautify your life with his righteousness. Everything that man do which have no connection with God is a sin. Sin is a cause of it all. And every person alive on this planet have been contaminated and marred by the sin virus. This is a plague that will torment the human race until Jesus comes and clean up this mess once and for all. Yeah. We speak according to Psalms 51 verse 2 as the Bible said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. And you see, and you see, because of Adam and Eve, sin has company. If there is sin, then death is the result. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is How can you choose death over life eternal? In Romans 5 verse 14, the Bible says, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, which is the figure of him that was to come. Every man that sinned, will eventually die. And from the day Adam and Eve sinned, brothers and sisters, death reigns. Because that 
that's the consequence for sin. But in verse 13 of Romans 5, sin was, the, sin was in the world. This gives evidence to the universal presence of sin. Verse 14 said, Nevertheless, that reigned from Adam to, to Moses. The point of verse 13 and 14 is that since there was no specific law between Adam and Moses by which man could be held accountable, the very fact that they all died indicates that God was holding them accountable for the transgression of Adam. This is not unjust. Because the principle also works in reverse. Sinners can be constituted righteous and hence live through Jesus Christ. The good news is that we don't have to die in Adam. We must die in Jesus Christ. Adam got us in this mess. And Jesus can get us out of it. 1 Corinthians 15, 22 said, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brethren, listen. If you desire the hands of Jesus to direct you out of this mess, then you must be born again. A new birth in Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to take note also that this born again has something to do with conversion. We are talking about converting. You convert from your old ways to a new way. I never hear anyone who convert from their new ways to our old ways. What kind of backwardism is that? Church, I would like to remind you this, lest you forget. Being born again means that you desire to take that walk that Jesus took. You are called Christian. Or if you prefer follower of Christ. It is that lifestyle the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You see, this journey that we are talking about, this walk of faith is not an easy one. It comes with do's and downs. All kind of trials, this journey, brothers and sisters, signifies death. And not just death, just like that, but death for God's righteousness. You die for righteous cause. When you die in Christ, you live again. Amen. That sweet sound and music to my ear. When a man is born again, he puts away all unwanted earthly trailblazer, such as lying, stealing, cheating, alcoholic and cigarette consumption, just to name a few. To become a Christian, brothers and sisters, there has to be a total transformation. It is not an halfway thing. Christ don't do things like that. You go halfway. Lord, if you meet me halfway, then I'll go the other half. God is a God who do things fully and effective. So you have to put away lying. The 
Bible says, thou shalt not tell lie. Yes. And that's one that is an abomination unto God. Stealing. He says that too. Thou shalt not steal. Cheating. That's also there. We do all kind of things and think that everything is cool. But you don't know that your life is going down. We have to be converted from sin to righteousness in Christ in order for us to be able to stand the wiles of the devil. Amen. That's why the scripture said old things. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And that's not me saying it, that's scripture. The book lift him up. Section 3, 4, 1, paragraph 1. The scripture reading that comes before Psalms 24, verse 3 and 4. In this scripture is asked two questions. Two questions. The first one is said, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And the second one, or who shall stand in his holy place? And I'm glad that there's an answer for these questions. The Bible says, he that has a clean and a pure heart, he who not, had not lift up his soul unto vanity, nor sown deceitful. That's what Christ wants from us, to be clean. We can't clean ourselves. He is the one who can do that. Many people go to the restroom and just what we call tidy. Wipe up yourself. That's not clean. You have to wash your whole body. When you wash your whole body, then God will wash inside. Because really and truly, the outside is not really necessary. But it's what's on the inside. The reading continues. What is it to be a Christian? It is to be Christ-like. It is to do the works of Christ. Some fail on one part. Some on another. Some are naturally impatient. Satan understands their weakness and manage to overcome them again and again. But let none be discouraged by this. Whenever little annoyance and trials arise, ask God in silent prayer to give you strength and grace to bear them patiently. There is a power in silence. Do not speak a word until you have sent up your petition to the God of heaven. Amen. If you will always do this, you will soon overcome your hasty temper. Yeah. And you will have a little heaven here to go to heaven. <laughs> Brothers and sisters. How to become a Christian and remain as one. Listen to me. To become a Christian, as I said before, you need total revamp of self. Yeah. You can't be a Christian and you ate. Mm. You cannot be a Christian and you have problem with a brother or sister. You see, what I'm saying here is that being a Christian, you have to learn to tolerate everyone in your surrounding. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't love, mm. that's a problem. Yeah. How are you going to see God if you don't love? Amen. 
How are you going to, 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 to see God if you don't have uh, the, the concern for your brothers and sisters? Mm. The brother do you something, you see him coming, you walk on the other side of the road. Mm -hmm. That's not being a Christian. Wow. We have to live the life that counts. Amen. The brother fell. Lift him up. Amen. The sister fell. Lift her up. Yep. Don't stampede on her. Mm. That's not Christ likeness. God came here many years ago and he showed us how to live. Amen. He showed us how we must affect each other. Being a Christian, brothers and sisters, is a challenge. A challenge that you and I must go through. There is going to be trials, brothers and sisters. Yeah. And in a little while from now, the enemy will be against us. Yes. They are always against us anyway. Yeah. Who are you going to manage? You find it hard to feed a brother or a sister, mm. give them water, mm. to say I love you. Wow. Lift up the brother in prayer, lift up the sister in prayer. Amen. Show love, mm. show that you accept each other in lovingness of Christ and godliness. Amen. This is not a mistake. <laughs> when Christ came here, you left the portals of glory. For you and I. He loves us to the point where he, 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 he wants to die for us. Yes. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought. Since Jesus came into my heart. What about your heart? I have ceased from my wandering and going astray since Jesus came into my heart. And guess what? I'm so happy. I'm so very happy, brothers and sisters, because Jesus is in my heart. And it's my prayer for you today that Jesus will be in your heart and remains there. Amen. Indeed, everyone who is united with Jesus Christ will get a fresh start. Yeah. The old life must be revamped, and a new life will be restored. Yes, it will, church. It will. Becoming a Christian requires some simple steps that you can make in this regard. Firstly, repentance. Yeah. And this repentance means to acknowledge that you have sinned and in need of a Savior. Amen. Having godly sorrow for your sins is to act upon your sorrow through repentance. With the desire of turning away from your sin and to do that which is righteous in the sight of God. Church, righteousness means right doings. Amen. Everything about God involves righteousness. Yes. So where we are going with our sin sick soul. We must come to God for cleansing our means of conversion, brothers and sisters, is not to change the color of our hair or put in a, a, a false toenails or, or put in, well, I would say false teeth, but, you know, may, may that rest for a while. But, but to put in false eyelash, what's that? That's no beauty.
First, it is to act upon sorrow through repentance with the desire of turning away from your sin and to do that which is righteous in the sight of God. That's what it's all about. So the question is, do you make your own decision to repent or, or, or is it God who produce in you the desire and action that pleases him? In Philippians 2 and verse 13, the Bible says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Amen. When you desire the hands of God, he works through you, brothers and sisters. You make your requests and he honors them. But your requests must be made through faith. You can't pray and doubt. How are you going to receive? The desire to come to the house of God and listen to his holy word is, it is not a, a coincidence, but the work of the Holy Spirit I tell you, brothers, when you do good, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. But when you do bad, the devil has an act in that. And by all means, when the Holy Spirit works in us, and it is a solemn privilege when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and I. You know, sometimes the Holy Spirit is silent. If the Holy Spirit still speaks to you, brothers and sisters, today, rejoice. Yes. There are many people out there today who sin, sin carnally and sin and never stop. Reject the hearing of the Holy Spirit until the Holy Spirit left them. Leave them up to their reprobate mind. Sometimes, when I think back, you know, I used to call my, my, my dad in the morning and in the evening. And we would talk. And now he's sleeping. I can't hear his voice anymore. Sometimes it gives me a touch of burden. Sometimes, I wish if I would call him and say, how are you doing? Drive all the way from here to Orlando to see him. But thank God for what he has taught us. Amen. Secondly, what about confession? It is that urgent and sincere you turn that you make and asking God for forgiveness. Yeah. Psalm 51 verse 1 says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out. And not some. All. Oh. You see? When you have repented and confessed, Jesus claims you as, claims you, he is your father that makes us family of God. We as a people here today, because of our connection with God and connection with you, he makes us family together. I'm not going to treat you in a different way. We love and cherish you just the same. We might not live in the same house. But we are family. So he changed your name and give you a new name. And had his holy name to yours. You are, a, you are now a Christian. A child of the king. A follower of Christ. 
Being a Christian doesn't mean we are exempt from trials, hardship, and making mistakes. Yeah. No. Like a baby who just begins to walk will always stumble and fall. Yeah. Why? Because the knees are weak. And so it is with us today. We have been affected or afflicted by sin. And that's why the flesh is very weak. We need spiritual strength, spiritual boost and connection a much closer walk with the man of Jesus Christ in order for us to be able to stand firm under the pressures of this life no one likes pressure your head hurts it too hard you get furious just imagine our continuous sin how does it make, don't you, don't, don't you think it made God feel? Do you think you hurt his head? Do you think we, we sin so much, God flings on the pen and said, I can't bother with these race? I was watching a video some time ago. This man was in the kitchen and he has a triplet. I think it's three boys. His wife, I assume, was, made, was away. And he was, he was doing something while on the phone, you know, only women can multitask. <laughs> That's one thing I'm sure. But he was doing something and the baby come close and he put this one there. By the time he turns around, the baby come close and he put, and he was all around looking like, that is how we are, brothers and sisters to Christ. We are like sheep that gone astray every time the Savior pick us up and brush us off, we go right back into the mud. And the saddest thing is that it repeats. Repeats and repeats. And I tell you, if we're going to treat each other like, 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 and even worse than that, uh, we're going to treat God just the same. I just spoke this morning uh, in Sabbath school about the least. He was talking about the, the, the mustard seed. When I said, Christ said, whatsoever you do unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto him. Yes. You cannot be a Christian and have foul mouth. Everything must change in the meaning your lifestyle, the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you look. Yeah. If you are going to enhance your, your old image, let Christ do the landscape. Yes. Yes, sir. When man landscape on their self, the landscaping is a downward spiral. Christ do the landscape is an upward movement. desire to come to the house of God, I said, and listen to his holy word. It is not a coincidence, but the word of the Holy Spirit. And it is a solemn privilege when the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and I. Yes. yes. When you have repent and confess, Jesus claims you. He claims you, brothers and sisters. We are not deserving of anything from God. But he claims you. He loves us too much. We cannot question his love. It's unquestionable. being a Christian means. See, when I say I am a Christian, I don't speak of this with doubt. I am confessing that I stumble and need Christ 
to be my guide. Yeah. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. I'm admitting to have failed and need God to clean up my mess. Yeah. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are so far, far too visible, but God knows I'm not worthy. When I say I am a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have my share of headaches, so I call upon his name. Amen. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not holier than Lord. I am just a simple sinner who received God's grace somehow. Become a Christian, brothers and sisters. You must have a new beginning, a new lifestyle. Be more transparent. Read the word of God. Obey his will. Do good to others. Loving each other, accepting each other. would change from sinfulness to Christ-likeness. It deserved to brag on the devil. Because when you are in the hands of God, all the devil intent is to seek you out. But he has to approach God and take us out of God's hand, which he can. A Christian is always in need of the grace of God. To become a Christian, you need the grace of God. And to remain a Christian, you need the grace of God. Because a Christian consistently need the grace of God. Always need the grace of God. The third and final step in crucial is crucial. Conversion. It is gaining the victory over sin, the wiles of the devil. Conversion does not take place in a day or a week or a month. It takes place in your life as you grow to be more like Jesus. You will become a Christian by accepting Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and the willingness to follow him and his truth all the way. You remain a Christian by depending on him totally to keep you from falling and to stand firm in your walk with him. Yes. Jude 1 24 says, No unto him that is able keep to keep falling. you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. You see, when you adapt Christian lifestyle and you honor God, then you can be bragged about just like God bragged about Job. Have you considered my servant Job? Would you like God to brag about you? Yes. Telling the devil, have you considered my servant and the heart. Can you consider my servant? It's not everyone gonna coincide on the side of the devil. And we today, brothers and sisters, we can't make the devil win up. We don't deserve that. Bible 
as many stories of people who became Christian and amid the struggles remained faithful. Saul, a persecutor of God's people, he was visited by the Lord and Damascus Road, being struck down with blindness from the light that shone around him. In Acts 9, 4, heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Immediately came to his senses, recognizing the voice that was spoken uh, to be none else of the Lord. But later on, he became an apostle. For the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. The devil didn't get that one. No. And I was telling the lady sometime this week that every soul that, that, that lay to rest in Christ is a punch to the devil. Oh, yes. Sister Jennifer, uh, uh, you, you decide to follow Jesus, that's a punch to the devil. Amen. When you decide to walk the walk uh, and to talk the talk, that's a punch to the devil. And so what he is doing, he is multiplying his effort by persecuting the Christian in a little while to come. Sad to say though, brothers and sisters, many of us, and I'm including myself too, who sits here today will not make it to freedom. Mm. Think about that. Wow. Wow. It's time to evaluate yourself. Yeah. On which ground you're standing. Who is your father? Who are you adhering to? Wow. Zacchaeus. He was the chief among the publicans and the rich man too. The Bible says in Luke 19, 8 and 9, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and I have taken not anything from any man by false accusation. I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, this day his salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham, he, Zacchaeus, eventually stops here. Yeah. Remember when I was in Sunday school, they taught us a song. They said, Zacchaeus was a strange little man. A strange little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree yeah. for the Savior he wanted to see. And when the Savior was passing by, he looked up in the tree and said, Zacchaeus, come down, for I'm coming to your house for tea. I'm coming to your house for tea. God wants to come to you, brothers and sisters. Yeah. He can change your rugged path, your direction, your ways your behavior and if your desire of all that to happen to you brothers and sisters then you must remain humble amen yes sir being a christian and remain as one but a verb is to remain humble yes come down come down off your high horses come down off your tree yes. <laughs> many go to their bed last night and didn't even wake up what is man that thou art mindful of? Yeah. Who do we think we are? But if you trust in God and desire him, then we are sons and daughters of the living God. Mary Magdalene of Magdala, adulterer, she finds joy in Jesus and fell in love with him. 
She witnesses most of the events surrounding the crucifixion. She was present at the trial of Jesus. She heard Pontius Pilate pronounce the death sentence. And she saw Jesus beaten and humiliated. Yeah. And he did all of that for you and for I. He was humiliated by the crowd, spat upon, buffet. She was one of the women who stood near Jesus during the crucifixion to try to comfort him. She was also the earliest witness to the, uh, to the resurrection of Jesus. She was sent by Jesus to tell the others disciples of this great event. She was probably among the women who gathered with the apostle to await the promised coming of the Holy Spirit in Acts 1 verse 14. Brothers and sisters, can't you see? We need a savior. We need a direction. We need a life because the life that we have now is not it is not it, applicable for salvation unless we surrender all to Jesus. Rahab, the harlot, practice prostitution. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 13, by faith the harlot Rahab Perish not with them that believe not when she had received the spies with peace. When we make it to heaven, we will surely see that lady. Brothers and sisters, let us pray with fervency that we make it to the kingdom. We all have sinful nature, but God wants to do something for us. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. We, we, we can't we can't say we are followers of Christ and we are one of the hardest set of people to deal with. That's why God wants us want, want, want to, 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 to remove that stone heart and give us a heart of tenderness and love and kindness for each other. To become a Christian and remain as one, you must be willing to give up the things of this world by more, be more Christ-centered than self-centered. Be willing to be crucified as our Savior did. Be willing to take up the cross of trials and hardship. Be willing to see your brothers and sisters sisters whom you don't love regardless of belief or personalities love them through the merits of the Holy Spirit Amen. be willing to feed or give water to your enemy you see that's the one that's on the list you know because it's your enemy you're going to no that's the one it's not your wife Brother Smith, mm. it's not your father. Mm. It's the one we don't know. Yeah. Yes. I was telling someone the other day that when you return your tithe and your offering, you get the blessing on the offering. You, you, you get the blessing. No, let me rephrase that. The tithe is 
a special amount. But when it comes to the offering, right? That's where you consider now. When you return your faithful tithe, brothers and sisters, God says, prove me, therefore. Prove me, therefore, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, so much blessing that you will never have enough room to receive it. Return your tithe, as God says. And the offering, you can't just throw something in. No. Give tangible. Blessings come from that too. So to be a Christian, brothers and sisters, you must be, be willing to give up malice Pride, yes. envy, mm. hatred of each other. Mm. To be a Christian, you must resolve whatever situation that you have with a brother or sister mm. in peace. Yes. And quickly. Right. And quickly. To be a Christian, you have to see and look through the eyes of God because through the eyes of God, there is righteousness. Amen. Amen. Wow. Because if you say you are a Christian and you are not having these fruits and characteristics, mm -hmm. you cannot remain as one. Be a Christian and remain as one. You must be willing to become as a little child, nesting in the arms of the Savior, and to be led by His righteousness. Amen. Story: You stole of a four-year-old girl at the pediatrician office. You know. Everyone at times have to go for their checkup. As the doctor looked into her ears with the otoscope, he asks, you know, sometimes when it comes to children, you know, you have to kind of have a little friendly gesture because they're going to look at you in a certain way. So he was just trying to be cheerful with her. So he said, do you think I'll find Big Bird here? The little girl did not say a word. Next, the doctor took a tongue depressor and looked down her throat. He asked, do you think I find the cookie monster down there? Again, the little girl did not respond. Then the doctor put a stethoscope to her chest. As he listened to her heartbeat, he asked, do you think I'll hear Barney in here? To his surprise, the little girl replies to him and says, oh no, you will find Jesus in here. Amen. He is in my heart, not Barney. I want a little joke. She said, Barney is on her under, her undergarment. The fact remain here, brothers and sisters, is that is Jesus in your heart today? Are you going to make him your heart specialist? Because every one of us here has an affair of the heart. I was thinking about how many, you know, how many years I'm, I'm, I'm living. I'm 55 now. I've never taken a, a colon cleanser before. I've never taken a kidney cleanser or a liver cleansing before. These cleansers 
my heart never stopped beats mm. before. Mm. Is it something that I do that mm. make it still continue? Mm. What kind of life I'm living? Mm. Am I living a life of righteousness? Wow. You see, to be a Christian, brother, you have to question yourself. Lord, is it me next? Not as Judah said. Lord, what kind of life am I living? Am I living a life for you? Lord, have I sinned against you today? Lord, Lord I even speak like so. Lord, what have you? What would you have me to do? To become a Christian, brothers, is a, it's not a show. It's a meaningful, spiritual, and faithful things to do. Because in the long run, to remain as one, you will be suffered too. Mm. But you are suffering for Christ. Amen. Brethren, Jesus wants to come into your heart today give you a new heart transplant Amen. and stay there yeah. he wants to renew our status give us a heavenly feature one that you won't regret give him the opportunity today to be your commander and chief Trust him today, brothers and sisters. Give him the authority over your life. Yes. Ask him to steer you constantly in the right direction. Yes. And more than ever, pray for someone. Pray for your fallen brother. Pray for your fallen sister. Pray for those who you are thinking who are going astray. Pray for the one who you thought maybe is going into a wrong direction of faith. Yeah. Stop bombarding each other and lift up each other in prayer. Amen. God need every one of us. Yeah. Or if you don't decide to go, then you will be in the throng for hellfire. Mm -hmm. yeah. God is coming, brothers and sisters. Whether you are ready or not, yeah. he is coming. And when he comes, ask yourself the question, Lord, am I? Will, will I be ready to meet you when you come? Mm. He's always ready to repair. What's been broken? Yep. He's the repairer of, of the breach. Amen. And he needs you just like oh, you need each other. Mm. I can only say it today, brothers and sisters. I don't know what else to tell you. Mm. Make it right with each other. Yes. Make it right with God. Amen. Make it right with your brothers and sisters. Mm. Make it right. Amen. In every way you can. And you don't do it because you were told to. Do it because you know it's the right thing to do. Amen. Because remember. God knows your heart. Yes. He knows whether you are lying. Mm. Or you are telling the truth. What is your say today? Are you ready for Jesus to come? Mm. If you are ready, let us pray together. Amen. Loving Lord, it is not by my I don't have any mind, but it's by your mind, loving Lord. I thank you so much. I did what I was told. May you forgive me. May you cleanse me. And even congregation today, dear Lord. 
May you aspire each other to do the right thing for you. May they have a heart that is just willing and ready to work for you. May we come together as one just like those in the upper room. Oh Lord, I pray, I pray, I pray today. Feed us. Feed us, dear Lord, with your word of grace, your word of hope, and sanctify us anew. May each and every one of us find good grace in you. Make the change of righteousness. Continue to love as you love. 